the biggest limiting factor is whether or not they accept international students. That's the biggest thing that you should start all of your search with. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. How are you today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm wonderful. What can I help you with? Um, so today as a pre-med student, I do have some questions for okay. you. Um, in order to repair for my medical school application coming up next cycle. Sounds good. Let's go. Um, so the first question um, I have is, so I am currently just the quick introduction. I am a third year okay. pre-med student at Allegheny College, which is in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. um, the first question that I have is like, should I apply directly after my junior year of college as an international student? Do you want to? Yes, I do want to. <laughs> There's your answer. A assuming you can. Um, and like, here's a quick recap. So I registered to take my MCAT in January 2023, which is about four months before my application started. Perfect. So... I'm planning to apply in May 2023. Yep. Which right after my junior year of college. Yep. That's that's the very traditional timeline. Um and also like um I have heard a lot of people said I should apply to MD school instead of DO school as an international applicant because they said that um if I apply to like a DO school, I can't, but it would lower my chance of like matching into residency program as an international applicant. And what are your opinions on it? I don't know of any data that supports that. I, I don't know. I, I don't know of any data out there that shows that international students shouldn't apply to DO schools. Um. So, and then another question is like, what are so am I I'm in the process of looking into my medical school right now. So I kind of like creating a list of medical school that I wanted to apply. So mm -hmm. what do you think? What are some of specific requirement and like criteria that I should look at when I look up for my medical school? Yeah, for you, it's really just do they accept international students? That's really the biggest thing. The, the, the biggest limiting factor is whether or not they accept international students. That's the biggest thing that you should start all of your search with. And I'm sure if you Google or go to F1 Doctors is a very popular uh, site out there that helps international students apply to medical school. Um, go and find the international friendly medical schools and the ones that don't just say it, but actually have the data to support that they do accept international students. That's where you should begin your search. And then it's all of the normal stuff I talk about. Where is it, right? If, if you, um, you said you're in, in Pennsylvania right now and you like the cold, maybe you're not gonna like Arizona in, in the heat or Texas and the heat. Um, and so maybe look at location, look at curriculum, uh, look at class size, look at all of these other things that are going to support whether or not you're going to be a successful student at the at each of those schools. Thank you. So um, another question is like, I'm currently working as a virtual medical scribe. Okay. So I'm working virtually and yep. I just don't know how to put it in like, is that considered clinical experience or shadowing experience or yeah. how, how can I put it in my application? Um, so, so I'll lead with the bad news first, or not the bad news, but my recommendation is stop doing virtual and get in-person scribing. Um, I would probably put it as clinical experience. It's, it's not shadowing, it's clinical experience. It's not good clinical experience especially now at this stage of the pandemic where in-person scribing is is back up and running at, in most places. Um, I, I don't think virtual scribing is going to be looked at favorably. I think, thank you. Yeah, and the reason I'm working like virtually is I'm working for a physician in New York mm -hmm. and my local hospital doesn't offer any job 
that for pre-med student um, because shadowing as a pre-med is also pretty hard. So right now I'm really trying to look in some um, in-person like mm-hmm. clinical experiences. And I'm also currently working as a health coaching. Have you ever heard about that job? Mm-hmm. So I have my own patient and it's, do you think it's considered a clinical experience? It's not the best clinical experience. Again, you could put it as clinical experience and try to try to write about it in a way that that makes it look like clinical. But it, I don't think that's any different than just like being a personal trainer. I wouldn't call a personal trainer trainer clinical experience. That's that's really true. Yeah, I um and because of a pandemic again, I try to right now I have a lot of like shadowing hours. So I'm shadowing with a current neurologist and I have been shadowing with her like over a hundred hours. And great. right now I'm really looking for clinical volunteer and clinical experiences. That so I, how, how are you shadowing this neurologist? Um, so for um, every day I shadow her three, three, three days a week. And then I came in, I walk into each patient visit with her mm-hmm. and then shadow her to the ICU unit and she also purge like perform Botox injection for like migraine patient yeah. and also she does spinal tap mm-hmm. procedure for like migraine yeah. patient. So this and is this is mostly inpatient shadowing that you're doing? Uh yes. Mm-hmm. Anything in a outpatient clinic? Yeah, I think it's actually outpatient clinic and both. So she on call the first month of okay. the first week of the month and then the rest of them, okay. she does um, outpatient clinic. So if she's so. at an outpatient clinic. She obviously trusts you enough and, and likes you enough to have you around for 100 hours or so. Just ask her like, hey, I would love to get a little bit more hands on. Can I bring the patients back from the from the waiting room, can I can I enter into their chart, like what they're here for? Can I take their blood pressure, their vitals? So if you already have that relationship set, you're already there, they, they know you enough, they like you enough, they trust you enough, see if you can take that relationship one step further and start to do some clinical things with her instead of just shadowing. Yeah, and I think yeah, over a hundred hours shadowing. I think like right now we pretty much. Um, I have asked her a lot of things about her personal life and yeah. like how do how does it like do balance work work life balance? And right now we, I think that we have a really good relationship. Good. So I want to move forward and ask if I can do like a little bit more of hand on CCB experience. Because it's a local hospital and it's fit perfectly, so I can do it while I'm in school too. So Perfect. thank you for for that. Yeah. I think I will move forward and ask her about that. Okay. Um. Oh, so so another question is like, how much research is do you think is enough for medical school application? How much is enough? Zero, more than zero. Research is one of the most overrated parts of the application for me, according to pre-meds. Pre-meds think that research is is everything, but it's not. So if you like research, go do some research. If you don't like research, how do you know? Have you done any to, to test that hypothesis, right? So go explore it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. That's okay. There are other ways to show that you're inquisitive and like to ask questions and all that fun stuff. With research comes other things, potentially, that students, again, think are important. Publications, poster presentations, like those are great if you have them. They're not important in the grand scheme of things for the far majority of medical schools out there. They don't care that you got a publication. It looks good, kind of, maybe, but they also understand that there are lots of games that are played with that, that the only reason Johnny has a publication, a first author publication on his resume is that because the PI is Johnny's dad's best friend and the PI says, oh yeah, Johnny, you can you can be the first author on this paper. I'll help you out. So there are lots of games that are played with, with publications and stuff like that. 
that I, I wouldn't worry about it, right? So if you, if you have research, but you're like, well, I haven't published anything, that, that's okay. Thank you. Um, and um, so I, I just bought your book, like the personal statement book, because I'm starting to like, at least starting thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And I will start reading your book, but I just, so what is your suggestion of like starting thinking about writing my personal st statement? I have a, I think I do have stories, but I just don't know how to put it in, like, into. Read my book. <laughs> Step one, read the book. The The goal of the personal statement is to, to tell the story about why you want to be a doctor. That's, that's my philosophy on the personal statement. Why do you want to be a doctor? Not, are you ready to be a doctor? Do you have the skills necessary to be a physician? Why do you want to be a doctor? And so the general framework that you'll read about in the, the personal statement book, which is this one right here, this blue one, is um, what is your seed, right? And, and I don't want you to use that literal language. Too many students use that language nowadays. But, but when were you first exposed to healthcare that made you think about it as a career? or think about it as something that you wanted to explore as a potential career. And for some people, that first seed was, oh, I wanted to be a vet. Oh, I wanted to be a dentist. Oh, I wanted to be a physical therapist. That was my seed. I wanted to be a physical therapist. And then I had other experiences that led me to wanting to be an orthopedic surgeon. And now I'm a podcaster. <laughs> but I think ultimately it's just, it's the story of that journey to how you got here. And it doesn't need to be fancy. It doesn't need to be unique. Most personal statements are very, very, very similar. And that is okay. Because at the end of it, it needs to serve a purpose. What is your journey to where you are today that, that makes it so you know you want to be a doctor? Convey that story in your personal statement. Thank you. Um, oh, and like I... I am aware that like as an international applicant, I'm not eligible for any like federal loans um, that to pay for my tuition fee in medical school. Yep. So what do you think that I should do to at least thinking ahead and plan for my medical school tuition fee like and living expenses? Is there any like resources that you suggest I should look into mm -hmm. what options? There are lots of options. I'm not an expert on on all of those options. Again, F1 Doctors is probably the best place to go for those resources. Um, there, Each school is a little bit different with what they will require. So if they accept you, they'll say, okay, great, you're an international student. You're not eligible for loans. You need to put into a bank account Full, full four years worth of tuition so that we know you can pay for it, right? And so you have to go, does, does anyone in my family have $250,000 to put into a bank account to prove that we have the money? Some schools will only want a year's worth of money to prove that you have that money. And, and you may be sitting here going, I don't have anyone that has any of that money. And that, that may be a hindrance for you. To, to, sh to show that you can go to medical school here in the States, unfortunately. The, the potential is you get a private loan. You have someone co-sign a, pr a private loan for you. Maybe you have family members here that, that have a little bit of, of equity in their home that they can co-sign a, a loan for you. Or the medical school offers a, a direct loan from the medical school, or they offer some sort of scholarship package to, to help you pay for it. Those are the things that I know about. There may be many more, so just do do some more research on that. But it's a, it's a, it's a huge barrier for international students. Uh, I think that's all the basic questions that I have. But like I just at this point, I I think I do really want to go to medical school. But at this point, sometimes I think it's just because of the homesickness, and I really need some like encouragement and like motivation to keep going. <laughs> what What do you need motivation and encouragement for? Um, how How can I give you that? Um, because like obviously I don't have a lot of friends, international friends, that going into this path, 
and somehow international applicant, I haven't met any friends that going in the same way as me. So I don't have any like company and like who okay. I can share my struggle with. So and go, who go to really you know. go to F one doctors, and they will connect you with people. Thank so you. that's step one, and and that's a huge part of it, right? So. Mm-hmm. If you don't know anyone in this journey, this path, who is similar to you, whether it's same ethnicity, um, an international student, whatever, on on this journey, it gets lonely. And it's hard to be alone in this journey. On any journey in life, it's hard to be alone, right? And so that's a big part of what I do. My whole message of collaboration, not competition, Whenever I travel, I try to have meetups and bring people together to show them that they are not alone in this journey. And so we just need to find you some friends. And and that's relatively easy. You just need to go out and look for them as well. So go to F1 Doctors and and connect with them and you'll you'll find you'll find them cuz I talk to lots of international students all the time. They're out there. You just need to go find them. So that's that's part of it. But the big part of it is, is you mentioned, right? You, you miss home. And so what does that look like? Um, ultimately, what is your goal? Is your goal to stay in the States and practice medicine? Is your goal to, to go to medical school and then go back home? Uh, so those are only questions that you can answer with enough soul searching. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's hard. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. What, it's what brought you hard. to the States to begin with? Um, So I started studying abroad um, in freshman year in high school. I went here for high school in Oregon. And then, I mean, at that point, my ultimate goal is just, you know, um, just improve my English speaking. And then I haven't thought about any further, any like career goal during that time. Like my goal was um, just improve my English, just experience a different culture and experience a different like educational background mm-hmm. um, than the one that I grow up with. Um, but moving toward my junior year in high school, after I took the anatomy and some of the biology, biology classes that I moved toward my goal to pursue a career in medicine. Yeah. So, and um. I do want, so I do want to practice medicine in this day, but I really want to serve people in my community, uh, specifically um, who cannot be able to communicate in English and really need like healthcare access. Um, Just one time I went with one of my friend family and they ended up going to the hospital to like the doctor appointment and, and they they because of the language barrier, they just cannot communicate how they feel and like what are they experiencing, what are the symptoms of the disease. So yeah. I feel like that moment really determined like my goal of pursuing to be a physician and help yeah. my own community back um either some rural area who who need a physician mm-hmm. can speak my own language. Yeah. So I can serve that community so that's motivating yeah that's that those are the things that you need to be thinking about as you're like questioning should i do this should i not do this think about those times and and keep asking yourself do i still want that as a as a goal as a mission so good luck part of part of this journey is taking the mcat you mentioned potentially taking it in january 2023 Blueprint MCAT is our sponsor. If you haven't yet gotten a free Blueprint MCAT account, go do so. You get a half-length diagnostic, a free full-length, lots of flashcards to start learning all of the content that you need. So again, that's blueprintmcat.com to go get a free account if you haven't yet. Thank you. You're I'm welcome. looking to that for sure. Anything else I can help you with? Um, I think that's all the questions that I have for now. And Thank you for giving me advice. I think it's really helpful for now. 